All right, let's talk a little bit about emotional intelligence because that is a word that I've heard used more often in the last 24 months than I think I probably ever had in the last previous 10 yeah, years. Yeah, but who's saying it? Um, well, you know what, though? I, I, I hear people in the industry saying it. I've, I've, I've hear, I'm hearing it at dealerships because, like, look, we're in an industry yep. that doesn't necessarily, well, we definitely don't train and coach on emotional intelligence. <laughs> and it's usually not a part of, of, of our day-to-day efforts. So, look, look, we're in an industry that suck it up, buttercup, check it out the door, and don't bring it inside. At the All sales right. floor anyway, yeah. For right, sure. at the sales floor. Correct. And, you know, just being able to have the emotional intelligence to understand what people have been going through for the last 24 months, I don't think as an industry that we were necessarily prepared for that. I definitely think there are some amazing leaders out there that were just naturally ready for it. Yep. But it's not something that we coach and train on. I'd love to get your thoughts on why you think that's the case. Why we're not training on emotional intelligence? Yes. Because our leaders are not emotionally intelligent. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Managers do things right. Yes. Leaders do the right things. Okay. All right. Say that one now, more time. Say that one managers more time. do things right. Yep. Leaders do the right things. I like that. Okay. Now, the first thing with regards to emotional intelligence, I'll talk about this for an hour. Let's you know? do it. So, the first uh, thing can't about... Let's do it for now. No, no I, know, do, I know. Let's do it. Let's do it for five minutes. Let's do it. <laughs> the, first, the first thing with regards to emotional intelligence, first of all, I am a servant leader. I mean, listen, I'm in Montreal and all of a sudden I'm here at the NADA closing deals. The only way I was able to do that is because of my numbers and, um, you know, I, I've proven what, you know, my theories. So yes. with regards to emotional intelligence, step number one, step number one is self-awareness. I literally had like to that. look at myself somewhere in my journey. When I went from manager to leader, I literally had to look at myself in the mirror and step one is the admittance mm-hmm. of ignorance. Mm-hmm. I've been doing it wrong. That's good. You know, I've been doing it wrong. I need to improve on this and I need to improve on that. And that's the first problem with a lot of people that walk around with egos. Yes. It's very hard to do that. So, yeah, you're going to be a manager the rest of your life. But I'm a coach. I'm a leader. Well, and no, look, and, and I'm with you on that. I, yep. I, I did this about five years ago mm-hmm. where um, I needed to get more emotionally intelligent. I'll be honest with you. I'm actually really bad at it. I was really bad at it. I think I'm progressively getting better. Okay. Yeah. Um, I could not get myself into a place to emotionally understand why people felt the way they felt. All right. And I definitely took things personally. Yep. I was a lot of, you know, check out the door, suck it up, buttercup, shut the hell up, do your job. Yeah. You know, a lot of that was coming out of my mouth. Yeah, but there's right? room for that, right? Well, there's well, room th- for that, but it depends there on is. your environment. Uh, well, it, it depends on the delivery, right? 100%. And if, it, and if I'm emotionally intelligent, if, if I can bring that empathy and the emotional intelligence invert ahead of it, then I can maybe say some of those words, <laughs> right? But when I have none of that, saying those words can be actually very detrimental. Um, so I did. I went through this same process. I went through this awareness process, and I started learning on why I feel the way I feel. Correct. All right? Yes. And that had this monster impact of how I can actually get to a place where I can be empathetic empathetic with others. Yes. And that, that's super hard because you it's the release it's the release of power. Exactly. Right? You have to trust somebody else that well first of all you have to not freak out that the work won't get done exactly the way that you want it to get done. But exactly. if you coach them and if they understand if they if they understand the DNA Yes. of your leadership or if they understand the DNA of where you're trying to go. I mean, true leadership does what? You know, it gives vision, it gives direction, mm-hmm. you know, there's motivation behind it, right? So um, as long as you're sharing your vision, as long as you match the vision of your employees with that of you and that of the organization where you're trying to go, boom, sky's the limit. Sky Actually, I limit. shouldn't say the sky's the limit. Well, it's, it's a the, starting place. It's well, a starting place, if right? If the sky's the limit, why are there footprints on the moon? <laughs> You always have these great one-liners. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. Okay, I'm going to give it to you. You're right. It's true. It's 100%. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in to the Strategy with Jason podcast with your host, Jason Harris. Don't want to miss new content? Be sure to check out the full podcast library at strategywithjason.com to stay in the know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Happy podcasting.